Welcome to Central Church Online. My name is Sam Anderson, and I am so glad that you have joined us today for our Sunday service. Listen, this is an opportunity for us to experience God together, no matter where you're watching from, whether it be Facebook or YouTube or on our website at centralchurch.cc. We are so honored and feel privileged that you have joined us today. If you're watching on Facebook, I would encourage you to just take a minute right now and to like this video and to share this video. You can share it in groups or on pages or to your personal page. You can host a watch party. All of these things enable the algorithms of our video to skyrocket on Sunday morning. So it's essentially like you're inviting your entire news feed to come to church with you. And we would really, really appreciate the exposure and the help getting the word out there. Now, during the service, on any of the platforms, website, YouTube, or Facebook, we would love to engage with you. If you hear something that you like during the worship, throw a praise hands emoji or you know a prayer emoji or whatever. If you hear something during the message, if you have any questions, comments, you wanna shout down the preacher, whatever it is, we would love for you to engage with us. We say this every single week. We don't want this to be entertainment. We want this to be engagement. We believe that even though we are separated physically, we're united by the body of Christ. And so we are so thankful that you have joined us. We're so excited to worship with you today. Let me pray and then we'll jump right into it. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for all of these brilliant people who have taken the time to glorify you this morning and to join us for Sunday service. God, I pray that you would be glorified this morning. I pray that we would experience you in a real and tangible way and it would produce life change in us beginning now. God, we love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen, amen. Worship with us.
Hey, welcome to Central Online. We're so glad that you have joined us today. We are going to start a brand new discussion topic this morning that we're going to be in this week and next week. Essentially, we're going to look at the Lord's Prayer and kind of break it down into two main ideas. And see, I, I thought it would be kind of cool to talk about this today because of the season we're heading into. We're about to head into the political season, and we're going to have a whole series for that starting in October. But for the next two weeks, I thought it'd be cool to talk about prayer because prayer is such an essential aspect of our spirituality. Prayer is such a, plays such a vital role in our faith journey and in, in our relationship with God. I mean, prayer is essentially, it's, it's communication with God. It's an opportunity for us to talk to God and for us to kind of be quiet and calm and, 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 and sort of honestly just kind of shut up long enough for God to speak to us. I mean, prayer, like we talked about a few weeks ago, prayer changes us. Prayer shifts our perspectives. Prayer can calm our spirit. Prayer can feed our soul. And so I thought it might be kind of cool to talk about the Lord's Prayer, where Jesus instructs us how to pray. You know, prayer is, is super diverse and its application as well. I mean, especially in my household. So I have six kids. And so sometimes when we pray, it's for a lot of different things. We pray for boo-boos, you know, like when, when we skin our knee and, and Jackson is crying his eyes out. I'm like, buddy, do you want me to, to pray for it? And he's like, yeah, daddy, let's pray. And so we'll pray for the boo-boo on his knee or we pray before meals. We have a, we have a, a ritual uh, prayer that we do before meals. We go open, shut them, open, shut them, give a little clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them, fold them in your lap, right? And then, and then we do our, our dinner prayer. We pray before bedtimes, you know, with the littler kids. They repeat after me so that I can teach them and train them sort of how to do it. With the older kids, we kind of take turns praying, and we, I pray individually with them. Um, you know, we pray for our needs. Many of us pray for our needs. When we need something, we, we seek the Lord uh, to provide and, and to come through for us. We do prayers of thanksgiving. You know, when we're excited and we're thankful for something, Lord, thank you so much for this blessing. Thank you so much for this, that, or the other. We use it for requests. God, I need this. We need you. Or, you know, kids' prayers. Sometimes there's even like these groaning prayers. Scripture talks about groaning prayers, and some of you may have experienced this where 
you're just, you're calling out to God, you're crying out to God, and words just can't even form. They can't express maybe the angst or, or the pain that you're experiencing, the suffering that's in your soul. And you just cry out to God with these just like, you're just groaning out to him. Or sometimes they're joyful prayers, and we're so overjoyed that we're just praying thankfully and joyfully. Sometimes we come to God broken. I mean, it's very, very diverse, the application and, and the use of prayer in our spiritual life and in our faith journeys. And so when Jesus is teaching us how to pray, I think it's really, really interesting the way that he does it, the way that he shares with us, hey, this is how you do it. Because, you know, in Luke, it, it, it tracks through and it shows that the disciples asked Jesus. They're like, yo, how do we pray? They were coming out of him spending a time in prayer and they approached him and they're like, Jesus, how do we do this? Because they saw that Jesus spent time in prayer and they said, we got to have some of what he's got. You know, he's doing miracles and ministry and all this stuff. And so the disciples approached him in the book of Luke. In the book of Matthew chapter five, Jesus is teaching and he's teaching on this mountainside and this is where we see the Beatitudes. This is, you know, blessed is this or blessed is that and blessed are this person who does that and all this stuff. And so it gets through the Beatitudes, which we're gonna look at in a few weeks in our next series because that's sort of almost like the constitution for the kingdom of God that's being established through the crucifixion of Jesus and all the things that are coming. And so we're gonna, we're gonna hit that in a few weeks, but in Matthew chapter five, he does the Beatitudes and then immediately following that, he teaches on law. He's talking about the law. He's talking about murder and adultery and the poor and the needy and how to relate and all these different things. And then he begins to teach on prayer. And he starts talking about prayer in a way that would really anger a lot of the religious folks of the day and of the time. You see, he starts talking about, in Matthew chapter uh, 6, verses 5 through 8, he starts talking about um, the, the haughty religious people. And he's like, yo, this is how the church people pray. And he says they do it for show and they do it loud and boisterous and all this sort of stuff. And he says, you know, don't be like them. Don't pray like the religious people pray. He's like, they're, 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 boister, they're boisterous and, and they're pompous prayers and all stuff. He's like, don't be like them. Instead, do it this way. And then he, he, he references in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 15, he says this. He says, this, again, this is Jesus talking as he's teaching about prayer. He says, don't do it like the religious people and the church people and all this. Don't do it that way. Instead, he said, this then is how you should pray. He says, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And he says, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And that's Matthew chapter six, verse nine through 15. And in my household, we used to end it with, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen, right? When we would pray this as children coming up. But over the next two weeks, what we're gonna do is we're gonna break this prayer down into two main ideas. We're going to talk about one of the ideas this week and the other idea next week. The first one this week, we're going to talk about community and how this prayer can teach us and show us some things about the community that Christ is hoping to establish. You see, and then the next week, we're going to talk about God's economy. And we're going to talk about what does God's economy look like. And these two weeks coming together, talking about community and God's economy, are going to be the perfect segue, the perfect setup for our next series that we're launching in October that we're calling Jesus for President. It's, an, it's a, a, a political series that we do once every four years, every election cycle. We spend about a month talking about kingdom politics, talking about the kingdom of heaven, and how that relates to, to the empires that we find ourselves in here and now and the political process and all of that. And so we're going to spend a lot of time talking through that as your Facebook feeds and your news feeds and all the, you know, all the things are talking about politics. We figured that we should try to bring some clarity and some peace and some calm to the whole situation. And so starting in October, we're going to do that. But these next two weeks are going to be a perfect segue. So let's pray. And then we'll jump into unpacking the concept of community within the Lord's Prayer. So let's pray together. God, I thank you so much for this morning. I thank you so much for the time that we get to spend together here in this space. You know, whether we're connecting on Facebook or on our website or we're watching on YouTube, God, we believe that, that you are uniting all of us through your Holy Spirit. We believe that you can do a work 
in our hearts and that that work can manifest in our lives and that we can be changed as a result of our interaction with you this morning. And so God, we pray that as we draw near to you, as we pause and dedicate these next few moments to seeking you, that you would draw near to us, that we would feel you and that you would move us in a real and tangible way. God, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, everybody, wherever you are, said amen. Amen. Awesome. So let's, I mean, let's just start unpacking this thing. The first half talks about community. The second half talks about God's economy. And so let's talk about community. The first thing, the first word of this prayer, he says, our Father in heaven. Our is the first word of this prayer. And the first word of the Lord's prayer is so important. It's so important. And we could skip right past it. We've probably heard this passage or read this passage or been taught this prayer as children in kids' church or whatever, and we have never thought about the importance and the emphasis of the first word, our. It's this prayer that Jesus is teaching us. He's saying, listen, guys, this is a prayer of community and reconciliation. Our Father in heaven. You know what he doesn't say? my father in heaven. He doesn't say that. He says, our father in heaven. You see, when we buy in to a relationship with Christ, when we decide that we're gonna dedicate our lives to Jesus, when we buy into this this faith of of, of seeking the Lord Jesus as our savior and we invite him into our lives and all stuff, listen, I, me, and my become a thing of the past. They become a thing, a, 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 a perspective of the old lifestyle. We belong to a new kind of people who have left the land of me. He says, our father, when we're born again, when, we're, when we place our faith in Jesus, we're entering into this new way to be human, a new way to exist that no longer places ourselves on the pedestal, but puts others before ourselves. And so in the first words of this prayer, Jesus teaches us the interconnectedness of grace and liberation and life. God intends for us to have interdependence with one another over independence from one another. God intends us to pursue sacrifice over security. God intends for us to experience community like we've never experienced anywhere else or ever before. See, you're not an island unto yourself. We talk about this all the time that, you know, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and all this stuff. And then it says that he created man in, it said, let us create man in our image. We say all the time that God is a communal being and we were created in the image of God, the Imago Dei. And that inside of us makes us naturally, innately communal beings. And so when we place our faith in Jesus, When we join the family of God, the body of Christ, it's no longer about you. It's about us. It's no longer about me, my, and I. It's about us. He says, our Father in heaven, all of us, our Father in heaven. And then the second word, Father, I mean, that's huge in this context as well. In the first century, father was such a loaded term. It was so loaded with meaning. It wasn't just a person. It was a social construct. I mean, it was, it was fathers were the authorities of the family. Fathers were the providers, the sustainers of life. Again, this was a very male-dominated culture in the first century Middle East, right? But when Jesus is instructing them, saying, hey, our father in heaven, in the community of our father, listen, this is huge. In the community of our father, the familial love that we experience is extended to all humanity. The love that we have for our brothers and sisters, the love that we have for our mother and our father is extended to all our human family, not just our biological family. You see, biological family is too small, right? We think, oh, I love my family and that's the way that it is. Or I love my country and that's the way it is. Listen, nationalism is too nearsighted. Biological family is too small. Neither of them are a bad thing. It's great to love your family. It's great to be proud and love your country. That's awesome. But listen, our love does not stop at the borders. 
of those things. Our love does not stop at the borders of those things. We now have a family that our father family, we now have a family that transcends biology, that transcends geography, that transcends socioeconomic divides. When you join the family that is characterized by our father, you have family in Iraq. You have family in Afghanistan. You have family in the Sudan. You have family that are homeless. You have family that are starving. You have family that are dying of AIDS. You have family that are in the midst of a civil war in their country. You have family, this new family. This is the new family of our father. When we are birthed into the family of Christ. And that changes things because listen, we cannot have God as father if we deny the sisterhood and brotherhood that we share with the rest of God's children. Do you guys hear that? That's huge. We cannot have God as father if we deny the sisterhood and brotherhood that we share with the rest of God's children. That should blow our perspective wide open. It's not about being an American evangelical Christian. It's not about being, you know, white middle class Christian. It's not about being black middle class Christian. It's not about being a Middle Eastern Christian. Or it's not. We are all children of God, and we have to take our own glasses off that we see the world through and say, "Whoa, this our Father perspective, this our Father mentality." is saying that we all share God as the Father and we need to recognize each other as brothers and sisters. I mean, that's a totally different perspective of community outlined by this prayer that Jesus is teaching. So he says, our Father in heaven. And he says, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Hallowed be your name. This idea of hallowed, it means greatly revered. It means honored or or typically referred to as holy. Holy be your name. For us to pray this is for us to ask God to make us into a community that could be called holy, that could be called consecrated or set apart, or in scripture they say a peculiar people. Hallowed be your name is a prayer that God would teach us to, to, to live this new way of life, a way of life that's, that's different from this world, that's set apart from this world, that would bring praise and honor to God, essentially following the ways of Jesus. And that's what our whole next series is going to be talking about is, is the ways of Jesus and how different it is from the ways of the empire, from the ways of this world. You see, when we're praying, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, that doesn't mean that we're trying to take over our nation and make it Christian or that we're trying to take over our states and make it Christian, that we're trying to take over our politics and our governments and make them Christian. Rather, it's learning how to not take over. It kind of flips it upside down a little bit to be a community where we find a new way of life by by giving ourselves to others rather than trying to impose ourselves into leadership. We give of ourselves to others. And when we do this, this idea of of forgetting ourselves, we become part of, of this joyful people that hollow God's name that bring reverence and awe and holiness to God's name by the way that we live with one another, the way that we serve one another, the way that we live and serve in community with one another. When we ask for God's kingdom to come and for God to be made famous, listen, oftentimes we need to get out of the way for that to happen. We need to get out of the way for God to be able to do work. Oftentimes we need to loosen our grip of control. We need to loosen our grip of of wanting to dominate and control and move all the pieces and make everything happen. We need to put others before ourselves. And when we talk about these things, guys, it's completely countercultural. It's completely different than what everything else in the world is telling us to do, what everything else in the world is telling us to be. Everything is about elevating ourselves and getting what we want and imposing that on others and doing all this. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. The way of Jesus is so, so different. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I mean, that's huge. That's, that passage is so much about community. Our Father shows our interdependence and connectivity to every son and daughter of God. And so when we pray this, we pray something like, God, teach us to love and relate like you do to all people. Teach us to love and relate. Help us to have empathy for all people, to rejoice with those celebrating and to mourn with those who are broken and to be able to feel outside of ourselves and our own perspective, you know? It says, our Father in heaven, this new sonship and daughtership, it supersedes the human worldly boundaries and borders. If we're praying this, we're praying something like, God, help us to see beyond ourselves. Help us to see beyond the man-made constructs and dividing lines that creates an us and them mentality. God, help us to see with a heavenly vision how you see the world, how you see humanity as a whole. Our God in heaven, hallow, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. May we be a community and a family who are recognized as holy, who are recognized as set apart, who are recognized as different, as peculiar. Not, not peculiar in the way that it's like, oh man, yeah, they're strange. That's weird. But peculiar in a way of like, man, that's completely different. That's totally different than anything I've ever seen. And I think I like it. I'm intrigued. I want to know more. If we're praying this, we're saying, God, please teach us to live a new way of life that is peculiar, that is set apart, that is different, that brings holiness and honor and praise to you. And then we pray, your kingdom come. Listen, we don't possess this kingdom as our own. We don't try to take over the current kingdoms in our world and make them Christian kingdoms. Guys, we're not in charge. We come to God and we say, God, it's yours. So when we pray through this, we're praying, God, guide us in humility. Guide us in service. Guide us in sacrifice. Guide us in a love that's so countercultural, people are just blown away by the expression of love and generosity and humility that we're portraying and displaying in our interconnectedness within our community. This Our Father community, guys, is, it's a new way of life. It's a different way of doing life that we're birthed into as we commit our lives to Jesus. When we say, I want to follow Christ. I want to be a Christian. I want to place my faith and my trust and my hope in Jesus. When we do that, they, the, the scriptures talk about being born again, being, being um, you know, raised from what used to be dead is now brought to life and God's in the business of reconciling all things. And you know, we use all of this language, but literally guys, what this means is it changes the way that we do life. It changes the way that we approach life. It changes our perspective on all things. I mean, think about it. This, this mentality of, of an Our Father community. What would that look like in our workplace? What would it look like in our workplace of trying to serve others and put others before ourselves and not trying to make ourselves look like the champions, but to resource our entire team and elevate together? As a, what would that look like in our workplace? What would it look like in our neighborhoods if we started viewing all of our neighbors as sons and daughters of God? We started serving all of our neighbors like God loves each and every one of them as much as he loves you and me. What would this look like in our social media posts if we had this Our Father community perspective? What would that, how would that change the debates and the arguments and our, our retweets and our reshares and all the things? How would that shift and shape our social media presence if we really applied this Our Father community context to our social media platforms. Here, here's, here's a crazy, crazy question. What would this Our Father community look like as they're voting on November 3rd? As they're partaking in the kingdom of the world, what does this Our Father community look like? What are our responsibilities? 
as an Our Father community. Or, I mean, if we're being frank, any and every other day after that as well. What does this look like in our daily lives of putting this into practice, of being an Our Father community participant? Listen, my challenge for you this morning and for the next several weeks and even into the election season, even beyond the election season, because the world is going to survive the election season. (laughs) My challenge for you is to pursue this Our Father perspective, to pursue this idea that when you are in relationship with Jesus, it changes everything about your perspective on community. It changes everything about your perspective on humanity. That when we say our Father, we're recognizing the brotherhood and sisterhood of every human that calls God Father. That's a big deal. That's a huge, huge deal. And so my challenge to you is to shift your perspective. Maybe shift your focus, shift your worldview, shift your lifestyle, shift your entire life. I mean, this stuff could have the potential to change everything about the way you do life. And you know what? It probably should. If you've not made a change since you met Jesus, you probably should. That's why scripture consistently refers to it as being born again. There's this new life that takes, takes in hold of your soul and of your spirit. And it comes out in your daily activities and your perspective and your worldview and the way that you interact with others. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Community is so important to the heart of God. And when Jesus teaches us to pray, he says, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. You pursue community with all people. Let's pray together. God, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you so much for sending your son to this earth to put on flesh and to to walk where we walk, to live where we live. And God, I thank you for his instruction and his teachings. And God, I thank you for this prayer that instructs us the importance of community and how near and dear it is to your heart and your mission and vision for all of humanity, the church especially. God, I pray this morning that we would be introspective, that we would look into ourselves and say, God, where do I need to shift? Where do I need to grow? How do I need to change to pursue this our Father community perspective. God, do a work in us this morning as we worship together. God, we love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen, amen. Continue to worship with us. Thank you.
not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. Thank you again for joining us this morning. Um, I pray that as you leave us today and as we end our time together, that you would leave viewing yourself as an Our Father community and that you could live into the power of who God says that you are. Listen, I wanna thank you guys who have continued to be generous during this time of online church and all of that. If you've never given here at Central, I wanna invite you to invest in the mission and vision of Central Church with your financial generosity. We've made it safe, simple, and secure for you to give. You can give one of three ways. You can give on our website at centralchurch.cc give, or you can give uh, text to give at 84321. You can text eight, any dollar amount to eight, four, three, two, one, and it's safe, simple, and secure. Or you can give in our church center app. Go to any app platform, download church center and search central church M I. It's a great way for you to invest in what God is doing in, through, and around this church. Listen, we are so thankful that you joined us today. We are praying for you. We miss you. We love you. And we'll see you soon.